Don't you just hate it when a good thing turns bad? <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 annoying new features in video game sequels. I'm sure you'll do just fine. For this list, we're looking at functions and features added into a series that drove fans crazy. <laughs> With many people feeling the latter entries would be better off without these additions, these features are infamously remembered for turning fans away from their favorite franchises. Yeah. Number 10. Tank Battles – Batman Arkham Knight What was the Arkham series missing before the latest entry was released? The Batmobile, of course. What wasn't it missing? Mandatory, non-lethal tank battles seemingly in the middle of every mission. Transforming the Batmobile into a tank to fend off wave after wave of drone tanks was not only repetitive, but served no real purpose to the plot. We've lost one. Programming Cobra to respond. With this entry having the fewest predator sections of the series, we feel the focus was lost in order to accommodate the Batmo tank. No one escapes me. Number 9, Unified Ammo. Deus Ex Invisible War. With the first game encouraging players to meticulously conserve and curate their ammo supplies, Invisible War lost some fans by switching to a unified ammunition system. With one clip to rule them all, some of the depth of the first title was stripped away from players for mainstream consoles as the primary culprits. I'm glad I didn't have to take care of it. This feature, along with the overall poor execution of Invisible War, led most fans to see this sequel as inferior to the original classic. I think you got your money's worth. Now stab out and keep your mouth shut. Number 8, Day Night Switch, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. What do gamers hate? Unnecessary interruptions, of course. Whether it's a reminder to go do chores or having to <laughs> go to work, breaking the experience is just the worst. Now, imagine a feature that does this on purpose every time the game switches from day to night. Stopping the action with an on-screen text prompt that never seems to feel any faster. Clearly, this was a product of its time, as this allowed the game to load its new aesthetic, but it feels like a feature the game would have been better off without. Number 7. Difficulty Lowering – Kid Icarus Uprising and Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Wii U Continue. Treating players like children is a surefire way to infuriate them. Let me make this easier for you. Big monsters kill Pit! Grr! Upon failing a mission or dying in these marquee Nintendo titles, the difficulty is automatically lowered in order to help the player progress. The most frustrating part of this feature is that it prevented players from getting through gates locked to higher difficulties. Even more annoying, director Masahiro Sakurai brought this feature back in Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Wii U's single player mode. Dropping the difficulty because we made a boo boo is just kind of condescending. We'd rather learn from our mistakes to overcome challenges rather than have the challenge taken away. This could be another trick, but it all seems so real. Number six. Forced co-op and uneven inventory system, Resident Evil 5. You grab it. Okay. Double whammy here. In a series celebrated for its tense survival horror with a bit of action, the fifth entry tweaked the formula a bit too much towards the action side. When Sheva Alomar made her debut in this 2009 title, she drove fans crazy, not because she was a bad character, but because her AI was dumb as a brick. This made co-op play almost mandatory, and the tension felt from playing what was supposed to be a horror game was almost non-existent. More and more I find myself wondering if it's all worth fighting for. This all combined with an inventory system that was totally balls, requiring lots of reshuffling and dropping of items just to pick up new finds. You will give me an egg. And that AI, don't bother giving her your healing items to save on space, because she will use them at the dumbest times. Number 5. Ground Missions – Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3 – Rebel Strike Flying the iconic vehicles of the Star Wars franchise was a dream come true for all fans. So what isn't on the bucket list of those fans? Jogging around Hoth at a pace rivaled only by Jabba the Hutt. 
Sure, the settings are still iconic, but the controls in these ground sections were inexcusably terrible, with the biggest problem being that you couldn't aim manually. In a franchise known for its true-to-film dogfighting, pulling players out of the cockpit wasn't the best idea for Rogue Squadron. We better act fast. Call for reinforcement. Number four, the judge system. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. The turn-based battling of the original was intact in this GBA classic, but the addition of a judge, who was kind of like a referee, to monitor the battles got really old really quick. Arbitrary laws that changed every day randomly chose one ability to be illegal, and if you used it, the character in question would get sent to jail. So, for one mission, you wouldn't be able to use fire magic, for the next, you wouldn't be able to heal, etc. It's an interesting idea, because it's clearly obvious this was a barrier designed to make sure you don't use the same strategies over and over, but we all feel that there could have been a better way to prevent that from happening. Number three, the real money auction house, Diablo 3. So I have to tell you, the endless forces of hell they got some plans for you guys. This is a feature that got so out of hand that developer Blizzard had to patch it right out of the game. It was probably more of a seller's market than a buyer's market. The auction house allowed players to sell and bid on in-game items with in-game gold, or even real-world cash. This essentially allowed Blizzard to cut off any potential illegal markets created by players, like the ones that sprang up around Diablo 2. When we originally set up the auction house, this was supposed to be a safe and convenient way for you to trade items. And in that respect, it was very successful. However, it soon became clear to players that in order to drive up demand for the stuff in the auction house, getting loot to drop while you were, you know, playing the game was super duper rare. And the auction house just made the, that experience way too convenient and really short-circuited our core reward loop. Thank God for Reaper of Souls and the patches that came with it, which removed the auction house and made loot drops a common occurrence again. The right decision is to preserve the integrity of the gameplay experience of Diablo and make sure that finding items in-game is the best place to find those items. Number two, car building, Banjo-Kazooie, Nuts and Bolts. Sometimes franchises take weird turns, but Nuts and Bolts went full speed in the wrong direction. Nuts and Bolts abandoned the platform routes that made the first game beloved classics in favor of a car building sandbox. It could still have been a pretty decent game if it weren't for the fact that Banjo-Kazooie was slapped into it. And why? Because someone at Microsoft apparently felt that no one wanted to play 3D platformers anymore. A bizarre user interface and the regularity of new vehicles needing to be built took players out of commission after a few sessions. And there you have the decision that started to see the decline of the once mighty Rare. <laughs> Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Nico, it's Roman. Let's go bowling. Number one, forced always online features, Sim City. This is what many gamers feel could set a dangerous precedent for the future of gaming as a whole. At the launch of SimCity 2013, developer EA Maxis told players that SimCity was designed to be played online because the game required you to play with other mayors nearby and that it was only possible to save through their cloud servers. This turned out to be a big fat lie, as within a week a modder found a patch in the code to make the game fully playable offline. Not only was the social feature something that nobody really wanted, but server issues caused the whole game to be completely unplayable at launch. All of this forced EA to backtrack on its claim within a year, earning them the title of consumerists' worst company in America for the second year in a row. Womp womp. Do you agree with our list? You sound awfully confident all of a sudden. What do you think is the worst added feature? For additional top tens, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. But remember. Hold on to your souls. They're all that keep you from going hollow.